Hello, hello, and welcome to Made by Hand. I'm your host, Tiffany Peterson. As you know, Santa Monica is full of art, craft, and culture. Today on Made by Hand, we're inviting you into our workshop to show how you can get into the joy of making. We'll also be visiting our home base at 1450 Ocean, the Camera Obscura building, where we're creating a new community of makers. And we'll visit your neighborhood to see how local artists are doing their thing. From bookbinding to silver enameling, art pinatas to extreme quilting, join us as we juice up our creativity with local artists and experiment with fun projects that are made by hand. Today, we will learn the eight-step process of binding our own book using common materials and tools. And we are so lucky to have crafter extraordinaire and Urban Craft Center founder, Ang Herod Caceres with us. Thank you so much, Ang Herod, for being with us today. And I have never bound my own book together. Tell me, what is the first step? Well, uh, the first step today is we're going to create the covers, and the covers are independent, so they're pretty easy. So we're going to start out with our handmade book cloth and our pre-cut book board. Okay. We're going to take some PVA glue. We're both going to try this. Okay. And I get to glue? <laughs> we're going to start out by applying a um, layer that's even more than anything, and you want to get all the dry spots. I'm going to have to glop it on because... And you're going to spread it evenly from corner to corner. You don't want any spot that doesn't have So glue. I see yours is a little thicker. Does, yeah. Is mine too thin? Thicker's Does it better. need to be thicker? Thicker's better because in the end, um, you don't want it to dry while you're applying it. Ooh. So I am already having so much fun. This you are going to get glue like in your fingers. There's no avoiding that, unfortunately. OK. So good um, note. Yeah, you don't want big puddles, but you do want a fairly good, even um, layer. Okay, you did that really fast. <laughs> Lots of practice. Okay. And I'm not afraid of the glue. Just slop it on. I will slop that on. There we go. Okay. And then you're going to turn it over and you're going to put it down right in the middle. Um, I like to eyeball it. Some people measure and you are going to get glue on your fingers. Um, we're going to flip it over and use uh, this bookbinding tool called a bone folder. And it's really just used to squeegee things down and um, for its pointy bits. Okay, so, so I flipped, I got mine down, yep, and flip I flip it, it over, over. And rub it down. And now I rub, oh, yeah. it's like ironing. Exactly. Yay. It really is a great tool, and you can get them at um, any craft store. Uh, and this next part's gonna require some um, wax paper, because it does get gluey. So you're gonna flip it back over, and um, we're gonna start wrapping the edges. But before we do that. Are we done we, with the glue? No, oh. we need that here, because we're not done gluing. But we're going to cut the corners, and uh, you want to cut them to the point um, where you can still see some of the some of the book cloth. Okay, but so not all the way to the cardboard. Right. So you're just, um, and again, there's technical ways you can do this, but we're just eyeballing it. I will. Because this eyeball is just crappy. It. I've often thought we need to do something interesting with those, but um, that's for another show. <laughs> so the once you've got um, uh, the corners cut, we're going to glue the edges. And that's because you want the glue all the way to the ends is why we have the wax paper. So you're going to just cover the sides with glue. I see you have it on the wax paper. On the wax paper. Cover so the side with glue. All the way Here to the ends, go. all the way to the corners. All the way to the ends, to the corners. Pull it away from the gluey bit and then okay. wrap it. I'm a pro now. Okay. All the way to the corner and then... Wrap it. Wrap and then you it. use your bone folder Ooh. to, again, squash it down. Another ironing session. Yeah, you're going to get glue everywhere. And then you do the other side. Okay. And then what's important to know before you do the top and the bottom is that we need to wrap the corners. Otherwise, you're going to get these awkward pieces sticking out the sides. And uh, so that's where the bone folder comes into play again because you're going to take the edge and you're going to wrap the corner like a wrapping present? Yeah, basically. Okay. And so you're just going to tuck it in. Like that's exactly what that is. And if there's a little glue there, all the better, because it's going to squish it down. So okay, see. so I see you just... Yeah, do it on your flat surface. Yeah, exactly. Just tuck around Perfect. the corner. Perfect. Okay, it's a little different than wrapping a present. A little uh, Only because you don't use glue. <laughs> oh, my, my presents sometimes have glue on them. Oh. Um, and then, then you just do the same thing. Don't worry about getting a little glue on the back side here because this is the 
going to get covered up. Okay, great. And we're just going to cover, wrap these edges like this. Oh and this is where, again, you take the bone folder and you iron down those corners so they're nice and tight. This is a very handy tool. It if, is. If you don't have a bone folder, what do you use? What could you use, maybe? Um, I have used the edge of a smooth pen. Okay. The end of a, like a wooden stapler. spoon. Oh, wooden Anything spoon. Anything that has a smooth edge. But I really do recommend picking these up. They're not expensive. They're super easy. Oh. Um, to use or to find, and uh, they are really helpful. I use them with my sewing okay. projects and my. And once you've got this done, okay, we're going to set these aside and let them dry while we do the second part. So again, it's not such a big deal if it's messy on the inside because this side is the side that really matters, and you can see our corners are nice and tight. Wow! Look at that. Look at that was so fun. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, so we're going to set these aside. Super duper. In some wax paper under, under a heavy book while we go to the next part. And the next part is really just folding our pages. At this point, you want to take um, stand, a standard book has four uh, pieces of paper folded into a chunk, and that chunk's called a signature. Okay. And the signatures are put together, usually you do eight of them, and the, the eight together make a text block. And that's a what we're going to sew together in order to Fantastic. make it Fantastic. Thank so. you, Ingrid. This looks like a good place for a break, while we wait for these book covers to dry. Thanks, Ingrid. So we're going to hop over to a local artist studio right here in Santa Monica. It's the Church of Type, where proprietor Kevin Bradley is continuing the age-old art of letterpress. Thankfully for us, he has collected a remarkable assortment of fonts and machines from countless artists before his time. Come on, let's go see how they used to print posters and business cards back in the day. This is letterpress. So this is Gutenberg's technology. This was what was invented in 1439. The most important invention in the history of the world is the printing press. And this is what brought technology to the people. So this is movable type, and uh, all this type that's in the shop, pretty much all of it is at least 200 years old. You know, the small type is metal, and as type got bigger, they made it out of wood. And that's because wood was cheap and it's not so heavy. If that was metal, it would weigh 10 pounds, right? So, oh, wow, yeah, that's light. But all this stuff is 200 years old, so think of this as, you know, Kinko's from 1830. So everything's completely assembled by hand, it's, and it takes so long to make, and that's why no one does it anymore. Right, right. And so I'm, I'm just a dinosaur, and <laughs> I've, I've landed here in Santa Monica, and I really love it. So if you want to see the process, step over here, and oh, I will fantastic. show you, I'll show you what goes you. into making a poster. We would love to see. So this is a job that's going to go on the press, and it will make it two color. So to make things two color, it's like a big game of Tetris. All these things magically fit together. And so we'll put it on the press, and we'll decide what the colors are going to be. And we physically pull out half of it and mm -hmm. replace it with, with these, these things called furniture, which are not high enough to print. Gotcha. So we print it, and then put, put it back together and take out the other half and print it. So. Everything you see on the ceiling that's multiple color means it went through the press a separate pass for each color. And now my new thing is making these robot prints on the wall here, and these are all made with letters of the alphabet. Oh my so this is a new way to use this type for me in, in a new fashion and format. So that's the art side of it. I like the way these are going. No, I don't think anyone's doing this kind of work letterpress in, in the country. And this is going to be a good size. This is uh, Dapt Ray Jr., who's one of my guys up there, versus the mighty Herptron. Oh, wow. From the Crab Nebula Galaxy. It's two monsters having a board. But this guy needs some work. The gold's got to go, doesn't work. And, and i got to write a story. And i got to, I got to do some fixing on him. But, you know, these are like little paintings. So mm -hmm. each one's one of a kind. But this is all hand stamped from letters. 
And have you always been interested in font and? Yeah, you know, I'm a designer first. First and foremost, was always a graphic designer, and, and I also have uh, went through school for painting and printmaking. I had a fine art background to mix in the mix, but uh, typography and, and design were always my first love. So finding the real type was just amazing. It's, it always is. It still yes. is. Yeah. And you yeah. know, if the power goes down, I'll have the. This will be the LA newspaper. I'll yep. be the only one print. Yep. So. <laughs> That is awesome. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Kevin. Well, thanks for coming in. in so awesome, so awesome. So awesome. Thanks for coming in. And, uh, Next time you come in, I'm going to put you to work. Okay, sounds so, good. That's how it rolls. And that's we'll be works. back soon. Walk yeah. on. Far out, 200 year old fonts? It's really comforting to see letterpress still busy in action. Speaking of busy in action, we're back in the studio with crafter extraordinaire, Angherd Caceres, and I believe we are ready for the next step in our bookbinding project. Let's grab our book covers and see if they're dry. Uh, well, not quite yet, but we have a big step before us anyway. Okay. Um, at this point, now we have our text block and we need to punch the holes that we'll be using to sew around the strap. So you see on our uh, book covers, we're going to use straps to hold them together, and then the t text block is held in by sewing across them. I see. Uh, the straps. And so we're going to punch the holes, and I've created a template to start with. OK. How do you create the template? There seems a lot of details in there. Yeah. So um, you have three straps. Uh, these ones are just leather, um, and it's up to you how you use them and cut them, but you want them long enough that they can go on either side of the book. Okay. Um, and so you want three uh, sets of holes to go around the straps. So you Perfect. can see this are on the side, either side. And then you need uh, another set of holes for a knot at the top and the bottom. And so I like to have those a half an inch down and a half an inch up. So. Uh, all together you have eight holes. Eight holes. And okay. then you're going to use this okay. if you want to hold that. Two. You're going to take, and you want to be fairly systematic about this because you want them to always be in the same place in each one. Of course. You're going to take your signature and you're going to snug that into the middle. Into the middle. And you're going to take your awl or hole puncher. Or coconut opener. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> you, it does, uh, like actually anything sharp will work as long as it's um, fairly small. And you're going to punch uh, through each uh, hole. And I do it on the edge of a table because otherwise you end up hitting um, the table. Yes, and yes. watch your thumb. Okay, watch my thumb. So it's just okay. Yep. There we go. Exactly. And you're going to do and it all just, the way through. Okay. All the way down so for each one. Uh oh, I moved the template. Okay, there we go. And then exactly. Nice. And once you're finished with that, you're going to end up with a whole stack that are uh, punched. Uh oh. Wow, I can, yeah, you definitely have to do this at the end of the table because this goes down pretty far to stab those. Okay, great. So th we are done with that one. So the part, uh, exactly. So uh, once you've done them all, it looks like this. You want to make sure they're all pretty consistent. If they're out of whack, you probably want to redo it okay. because it's going to make your book look strange. Of course. Um, and now you're going to the sewing part. So to sew, you want to start with a wax linen thread. The wax helps glue the knots together uh, when you pull it tight, which is kind of nice. And you want enough that it covers um, every single signature, so eight of them, plus some more. So you end up with a fairly long piece of thread. So and why do you prefer the wax over just regular hemp or any twine? Um, well, it, linen's very strong, and the wax does bind together really well. It helps hold those knots that you have that you're going to be okay. sewing. Fantastic. So All you right. want to start um, with your first signature, and you're going to start from the outside, and you're going to go in your first hole. Go in. Okay, here we go. Okay, don't poke yourself, Tiffany. There we this go. isn't a very sharp needle. It's really just a darning needle. Okay. You don't want it too wide, but um, you do want one all, the the uh, all the way through. All until you have about six inch six tail. Six inch tail. And then you're going to go out the next hole. Out the next one. Here we go. Let me move my fingers. There we go. And okay. if you go in the next hole, just before you pull your loop 
uh, tight, you're going to slide in the... Um, I promise happens. I've sewed before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and you're going to so go in the next go hole. Go in the next one. Okay, great. And you're going to put the um, strap in place. Okay, great. And you're going to do this the whole way down okay. until you have all three straps. Oh, I see. And it's up to you whether or not you want the shiny or the rough part out. So. Oh, that's so perfect. And then that's... Mm -hmm. I okay. And it's you're going to go all the way down. And um, doing all three straps. And once you've done all three, uh, you want to tighten your string. So at that point, okay. you're going to grab both ends of your string and you're going to pull opposite each other. You don't want to pull out because you're going to rip the paper, but if you pull opposite each other, it just tightens in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it does help to have a, yeah. a helper. Yeah, have a little helper bee. Okay, we're almost there to the tying the knot. So once you've done... Um, the first signature and you've tightened, you're going to take your second signature and put it in place on top of it and go in the first hole and sew down the other direction. Okay. Let's see. All right. So we've got... Mm -hmm. And one more hole. It's starting to look like a book. All right. Okay. It is the beginning. And you're going to grab... There we go. So this is the tightening part. You're going to okay. grab both ends and so pull. So grab both ends and pull. Oh, I see and you what can you see mean. how it yeah, tightens. You really yeah. want to tighten those guys so that it keeps it really strong in there. Okay. And then the next signature is going to come in, and you're going to go in the hole that corresponds with where you're at, uh -huh. and Match all the way up. along, okay. and tighten. Okay. And then you're going to sew the two ends together. And then you're going to continue adding signatures going mm -hmm. back and forth. Okay. And at the end of each one, you're going to do something called a kettle knot. And a kettle knot is where you go down and you sew around the stitch below it already. And I can demonstrate that. Here's one that's almost Fantastic. completely finished. Fantastic. You can see I've come through and I've gone down and sewn over each mm -hmm. strap with each signature. And I've made the little knot at the end. And this is what a kettle knot looks like. You've got your stitched before. Mm -hmm. You're just going to go around it and pull through. I'll do the first one and then you can do the second one. So it's basically like a regular knot. It is. Okay. Um, and there are, so at the very end you want to do two of those to finish it off. Okay. Well I'm going to go ahead mm -hmm. and sew these. I'm amazed. <laughs> We're almost done with our book. But before we finish, I'd love to share with you a little peek into our home base, 1450 Ocean, the Camera Obscura building, where we host workshops in making and movement. Check out our 1450 community.
If you'd like to learn more about what goes on at 1450 Ocean, please visit our website at smgov.net slash 1450ocean. It's where you can find out more info about our project today, including a full list of materials and tips. And you can also check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash 1450ocean slash events. We'd love to see you stop by 1450ocean for a class. All right, Ang Herod, we are just about finished with our book. Show me, what is the last step? So the last step is to glue on the covers, which we've started. So we just put them in place on top of our uh, text block. Oh. And now we're gluing the straps down. So if you want to just take some glue love and to. place it here on the strap. You don't want a whole lot, but you want it to go from corner to corner. Okay. And it is tacky glue. It's hard to get out, um, but it's got a nice strong grip. There we go. And then you're going to um, fold it over and pull it as tight as you can. Okay, here's my superhero strength. And you're going to squash it into place. Okay. And then I like to put it under a couple of books for at least a, an hour or so. Okay. And really let it get nice and uh, yeah. dry. Squeeze it. Um, tacky glue does dry pretty quickly. Okay. And then once you're done with it, um, you can see you'll still have your raw edges. And mm. there's a couple ways, there's three different ways to handle that. One is to cut another piece of book board or pretty paper, or sorry, book cloth and pretty paper and put it over it. Um, another way is to glue, is to uh, spread your PVA glue all over this last page, close the book on top of it, and then rub it down with your bone folder so that you have oh. it glued to the front. Yes. And then the third way is to actually cut a whole new piece of paper, glue it to the front, and then run a bead of glue along the front first page and glue it together that way. And that's more traditional finish to yes. a hardbound book. Yes, very professional and gorgeous. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Inherit. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, fantastic. Hooray. Big thanks to Inherit Caceres for joining us today and teaching us a whole new project to experiment with. And look at this gorgeous bound book that was made by hand. I love it. And just a reminder, 1450 Ocean has ongoing classes for both making and movement. I want to thank you all for being with us today. We'll see you again soon. But before we go, we've covered making today, but we haven't moved enough. So now I invite you to get up right now, wherever you are, and join us in our dance party sign up!